So I upgraded the side to uh, cheese potato, so that is three dollars more. Came up to nineteen fifty, but there's still seven percent GST. Grand total. Welcome to another episode of Food Finders. Today we are in Clementi and we are going to answer the age-old question of is the east side really better than the west side? And we're going to base it on this article 10 must eat food spots in Clementi from Singapore's west side. So as a Westie, the writer says I've decided it's time to uncover all of the food gems that the west has to offer to show that the west side is as good or even better than our neighbouring region. So here we are in Clementi, we're going to go find our our first spot today and yeah it's pretty bright and early I think it's time for some Mi Pok let's go okay so we are here at Li Yuan Mi Pok technically this is not on our list why I wanted to try this right is also cause it is like a Japanese Singaporean food fusion the the chef that has started this is a you know actual Japanese so it adds an interesting twist to the very popular Mi Pok that we have So I ordered, I ordered the wrong item. It should be the Japanese fusion meepok, not the special meepok. So our first item of the day is not on our food guide. This is Li Yuan Meepok. The special thing that we got is this fusion Japanese Meepok, which comes with this char siu. Uh, unfortunately, it looks like it's, it's boiled, lah. so it's a boiled char siu rather than it's uh, normally roasted. Uh, so Li Yuan also opened up a new store. This is a Donburi store in the same coffee shop. So I think I made a mistake with the ordering. Uh. I should have gotten the number one, uh, which is the, the Bakudan pork thing. So the, the way the guy described was quite interesting la, right pork wrapped with minced pork uh, some vegetables and cheese so it is supposed to like explode so let's start off the japanese char siu is here i guess aesthetically doesn't look that good because it is boiled la. so like you can see like the edges are white uh, so inside also comes with abalone uh, minced pork of course because you know bar chom you need minced pork and a uh, pork ball this is it we're gonna give it a try Okay, it's quite easy with the parsley. It's it doesn't seem like it's cut evenly la. So like one one part like thicker than the than the other side. So it's a bit thicker and then it becomes like thinner la. So it's like not. The the sauce is a bit on the sweeter side. So that's quite interesting. Noodles are quite well done. So there's a slight firmness to it. It's not like super soft. So I like that part about the texture. The sauce itself is quite unique. Like. Normally, uh, bar chong will be more on the sour side. This one is actually more on the sweeter side. Uh, but it's not like the tomato sweetness. So it is quite true to Japanese roots. Like, like you know, even like curry, like everything is like a bit sweet for Japanese. Quite a good mix. Yeah, but char siu aside, mm, it's all right. I would, I would give this a three stars out of five. Yeah, not super amazing. Actually, it's alright. Let's try the Don Bui. Okay, so we are moving on to try the Don. Oh, the Don actually looks pretty promising, bro. So there's like a pork cutlet with curry Don. This is what I got. It's falling apart a bit, so me. Anyway, let's give it a try. Oh, this is nice. This is pretty decent, man. It's not very spicy. It's more on the sour side. So it goes well with the fried, the fried pork. And I like that they're very generous with the curry. So for like any curry rice I'm eating, right, I like that the curry is swimming. Joseph schooling. Simply sensational. This is surprisingly good. I would actually buy the Donburi over the Mi Bok. How's the Mi Bok? You like Mi Bok? For Li Yuan Don Ya, I would give it a 4. I would recommend the Don and actually uh, I'm, I'm quite excited to try the, the Toro Toro Bakudan rice. But even like the curry Don itself, I think it's of a pretty good standard so I would think that the, their signature item is going to be even better that's it for this place we're going to move on to the next place Explosion Animation yeah, doesn't... Whoa! Whoa! do you ever see these like gas trucks right I don't know in my head like, I keep thinking if I one day like crash into a this truck with all the gas right you'll just <laughs> explode you know like GTA we are here at 448 Clementi 448 Market and Food Center. There are a lot of recommendations on our list from this food center, so I am excited to try it out. So let's go, man. 
<laughs> queuing for carrot cake in this store that is called Fried Carrot Cake. It sells Fried Carrot Cake. Uh, so I'm, I'm reading the food guide that we have and like majority of the things are actually from this hawker center. Sun Huat, cooked food, namki fried prawn noodle. Okay, uh, this one I need to clarify because I tried before this namki fried prawn noodle. I would not go for it again. Okay, Yong Fa Hainanese curry rice and curry fish head. Oh, there are also long queue. That, that one can try. It's good. Uh, and this one that we bought here, fried carrot cake. It's still got here. Chai Ho Sate. Is it open? Hey, how many from here? Yeah? Chi Ho is also recommended here. Yeah, I've read like three quarters of our list is like from this place. I also decided to try a stall that's actually not recommended in a lot of places. Uh, but like, I saw the queue is freaking long. I assume it should be good. Lah. Right, so this is the Bung Ki Wantan Mi. Let us go one by one first. Uh. Let's start with the carrot cake. So it is 350, but you can see the portion is freaking insane. Uh, so I like that it is cut up in small pieces. It just fits all on a spoon. It's very fragrant. I like that it's very, very generous. It's a very basic carrot cake, but it's like a good carrot cake. So no frills, no prawn, no like anything else. I'm trying to find some other ingredients that they added. There, there's this subtle sweetness to it. I think it's in typo. So there's a bit of typo like mixed inside, but it's like mixed into very small pieces. Uh. But overall, very flavorful. A uh, very simple, basic carrot cake. Uh, but I will give this a 4 bomb vibe just for being so freaking generous. Uh. So moving on, we're going to try this Munki Wantan Mi. On first glance though, the char siu looks damn dry uh, and like the redness is very artificial. Uh, it's probably from, from some dye. Uh. Doesn't doesn't feel natural. So here you see the Wantan and Munki is actually freaking huge man. It looks The Wantan actually looks very promising right, compared to the char siu. So we have a soup Wantan version uh, and then they also provide the fried Wantan. Let's try the char siu first. Looks very underwhelming. Very dry, very dry. It's almost like a powdery bomb jar. Do you get a spicy one or is this like non spicy? Ah, oh, shit. Okay, no wonder it tastes like ketchup. <laughs> Next time, buy spicy. Yeah, noodle so so. Okay, we're gonna try the one done. Okay, okay. The saving grace is the one time. The one is really good. It's quite generous with feeling. It's pretty big. You get minced meat and uh, tastes like uh, salted fish, if I'm not wrong. It's like some kind of dried fish. The the wonton is really good. The noodle itself and the char siu, very average. Okay, so we're gonna try the fried wonton as well. It's okay. A lot less generous on the meat uh, versus the, the boiled wonton. It's a nice crispy texture, like it adds to the whole dimension. Not enough to save this dish. Uh. But I guess 350 is is a very affordable price uh, for this uh, for this combo. I think for, for a good wonton mi, like every element needs to be good. The wonton is good, but char siu wah dem I I will give this three star lor. Three star average but I, will, I will average it out. So we are done here. And Clementine 448 and now transition. There are like probably three or four coffee shops all in very close proximity to each other. One thing interesting here right is there are a lot of Myanmarese Myanmar Burmese Myan ah shit how do you say it Myanmar Myanmar Burmese There's a lot of Myanmar Burmese Myanmarese stalls Burmese stalls Okay, so we have Bolton Jones. We're gonna try the Western food. Not a head dog, fish and chips, you ma? Yeah. Okay, can you give us a We are at Man Xiang Ji, Mun Xiang Ki, Jiapo Rose. Okay, this is super off the radar. It's, it's not even on Google Maps, la. but it just happens to be in the same coffee shop as Bolton Jones. And the Rose has you actually looks damn good. La. So we're gonna give it a try. Probably better than the previous uh, one time we chat you, bro. <laughs> Okay, okay, so we ordered from Bota Jones. Uh, we got the Haddock fish and chips. So it's not the regular fish and chips, we got the more expensive one. But I just have to read out the price for you. So the Haddock fish and chips is 16 50 So I upgraded the side to uh, cheese potato. So that is $3 more. Ultimately, came up to $19.50, but there's still 7% GST. So plus. 1.37 Grand total 20.85 The essence of Bota Jones is they promise hearty American sized portions I'm gonna try the haddock first the... Oh That is smarter Please don't show the fork and spoon cutting That was a big pop 
fish is slightly dry, but I like that you get the option of a different kind of fish. Right? If not, you know, fish and chips, you always get the, the it's always always dory. La. I think it's a pretty cheap uh, white fish. Uh, but here you can get the head dog. So texture is a bit different, flavor is a bit different, uh, but slightly dry. I think it might be a bit thin also. So when they fry it, like, it kind of dries out. Okay, but the batter is uh, pretty crispy. So that's good. It also clings to the fish meat. Uh, there's a certain firmness to it, la, so it's not like overly cooked. So overcooked fish again uh, starts to flake, but this retains its texture. However, it is it tastes a bit frozen, like it's been it's been there for a while. Uh, so yeah, not super fresh for me. The dialogue tastes with the dialogue tastes way better, la. very heavy on the mayo. It's not wrong. It tastes like there's mustard. I think it's quite unique. It's, it's a bit spicy. I like the seasoning on the Cajun fries though. I think if they fried it a bit longer, the Exterior will be crispier and it will taste way better. So it is a mashed potato with cheese on top. Okay, okay. I like that you get chunks of potato. So it's not just like a puree where it is totally blended. But it's really, really good. Ah, this onion also. The meat itself is so-so. Sides are good. But overall, I would not pay 20 bucks or close to 20 bucks for this. La. Doesn't score points for value, value for money. Uh, so I give this a two star. Would not, would not, nah. Yeah, okay, so that's for Bota Jones. Let's move on. Moon Siam Ki Charcoal Rose. Two meats is $7. So I asked for Char Siu and the duck. Uh, so that was $7. But they gave me the rose pot for free. Last. White radish and chicken feet soup. <laughs> oh, okay. Very hearty, simple soup. Points for not being MSG soup already. Well, I'm a bit disappointed with Char Siu. The outer coating is great. Like, you get this caramelized texture. The problem is the meat is not tender, it's a bit dry. But they got the marinade and the, the char outside. The outside is perfect, inside could use a bit more work. And I heard that this is like pretty new, la. it's like open like two months. Let's still give it a shot. So we're gonna move on to the duck. So it's uh, apparently a herbal roasted duck. Very nice herbal flavour to it, uh, but could be fattier. My last hope lies on the roast pork. It's a very nice crispy exterior. A bit better on the tenderness on the inside, but not like super amazing roast meat. La. I mean, Singapore is how competitive for roast meat. Three la, three star. Okay, but still better than Bola Jones. Like, you know, if you had to spend like $10, like buy this, then, and this one. Uh, that's over here. Swipe right for next spot. No. We are gonna try and find this cafe, uh, Buttercup. Buttercup rock! Just add some variety to the Clementi food store. If not, if not, it's all like hawker food. Butter cake and cream hidden in the enclave of a tranquil ambience of Sunset Way since 2009 presents a tasteful adventure of delectably tantalizing taste. So we're gonna get some of their signature items. So first item is the Thai ice lime tea so that's actually quite unique like i've had a lot of thai milk tea but not with lime so sustainability no straws bro so that i use my mouth I am love. is this like heavy layer of cream on top also so it's not just milk tea but it's sweet uh. i taste the lime <coughs> i feel like this should be stirred DIY stir it myself. Ah, okay, okay. Tastes way better. Okay, I'm getting the lime. It's a very subtle kefir lime. Yeah, this, this kind of works with cream because the cream is very heavy. Lime is very refreshing, more slightly, slightly tart. Uh, goes very well with the tea, actually. Yeah, this is actually quite good. Oh, there is straws. Okay, so. You are made of stupid. Okay, so next item up is the wild mushroom soup. Looks like a very generous big bowl of mushroom soup. Uh, so comes with a bit of cream on top. The, wow, you can smell the truffle, bro. Once I stir it, like, wow, the truffle scent starts to come out. Wow, very, very savory. Very strong mushroom flavors. The heaviness of the dishes here is quite prominent. Uh, like the, a lot of flavor packed into things. Appetizer, we have the garlic bread basket. This, I assume, is this gonna go really well with the mushroom soup. Uh. Just gonna dunk it in. Yes, garlic bread and mushroom. Nice crispy flavor. Garlic is quite sufficient. There's a bit of uh, uh, rosemary and thyme kind of thing going on. Okay, so uh, we got the seafood 
aglio olio, one of the signature items as butter cake. So it looks really simple, but the seafood is actually quite diverse. A lot of places they do seafood aglio olio, it's just like prawn and squid. You know, it's, it's freaking boring. But here they actually have clams, they have prawn, they have scallop as well. It's like a baby, baby scallop. Yeah, I think about what I say. It's not super diverse, but like I think the choice of seafood is different. Okay, it feels quite wet. I like that. Very good. You don't want to have like a dry, uh, dry pasta. That sucks. Man. Mmm, spicy air! The chili ray attacks you. <laughs> oh no, it's happening again. Okay, you get a lot of hints of garlic, hiccups, and chili. So you, Eugene can't eat seafood apparently. You know who else can't eat seafood? Aquaman. Because it's uh, cannibalism. Are you not ashamed of yourself? The, the olive oil is just nice. Could be firmer to get al dente. Uh, but I, th I think the cooking style is a bit more localized. La. I'm gonna try the scallop. But aglo olio is supposedly just olive oil, garlic, chili. That's like basic of aglo olio. You know, to, to make a good aglo olio is quite challenging. La. I think it's really detailed, la. it's really good. So important thing for any molten chocolate lava cake is the molten chocolate has to flow. So uh, this is quite promising. Like you can see the chocolate just like oozes out. I'm going to pair it with the uh, vanilla ice cream. I like that you can see the vanilla spots, the pots of, um, you know, the vanilla seeds. Pairing vanilla ice cream with molten chocolate cake. The cake is very moist, very soft. Chocolate, flowy, not overly sweet. Certain bitterness with it. So actually it all goes very well. So this warm, this cold, so there's a lot of contrast. 5 on 5 just for the cake. Man. So this is what we're trying at Butter Cake. I would give Butter Cake like a 4.5 based on what we tried. Each dish is actually pretty good. It's quite generous in terms of the quantity. We're gonna try one last spot at Sunset Way. The good thing is it's all in the same block. So um, there are a lot of options here. So let's go check it out. So we're at Lina Satay Club. So we just passed by and thought that we tried the satay. Is it possible to get one chicken, one mutton, beef, one beef tripe, one beef liver? So like one of each. Satay. So, uh, as I'm super full, I only got one stick of each flavour possible at Lina's Satay. Uh, so, they mentioned that the most popular flavour is the chicken. I actually really like that they only started to grill my satay upon order. So, it took a bit, a bit longer. Right, so, I'm going to try it with uh, satay peanut sauce. This is definitely something you have to eat with satay. Mm. Maybe you bite into it. It's just like crispy, crispiness coming from the outer caramelized area. You try the mainstream flavors first. See if this is mutton or beef first. Huh? Forgot. I can't tell the beef. Huh? Okay, the reason why I'm so confused is because the mutton doesn't have the gaminess. We couldn't tell, so we had to go and ask them. You can see a green tip at the bottom, so that indicates the beef. Okay, the beef is a lot leaner though, like it's meh. But the mutton, the mutton is really good though. Very juicy, very meaty. Very, very mild mutton. Okay, like, I think when you eat to the center, then you start to get more of the, the mutton flavor. But like the first bite, I couldn't really tell between the two. The marinade is also very similar. We move on to the more exotic things. So this is the beef tripe, and then we have the beef, beef liver. Oh, tripe. That's good. Top. So yeah. Beef liver satay, yo. It's quite unique. It's very meaty for a liver. It's not like pork or chicken liver where it's very powdery and like iron. But the iron flavor is very strong. A bit dry for me, for the liver. Yeah, but otherwise, like flavors are quite good. Um, I mean, out of the five, six, my favorites would be the beef tripe and the mutton. And the satay sauce definitely costly blended, like peanuts. And I, I love the variety. Uh, so it's actually not super common to find like. Um, a number of different flavor satays. Uh, I give this a, a good four four thousand and five. And that's it for our Clementi food finding. So we're gonna run back to the car now. Okay, so this is the end of our Clementi food finding. I think um, it's not. 100% that everything we try is gonna be good lah. So I mean that is the goal that we're trying to do. Find food la. hence I mean the series is called Food Finders right carrot cake um, I think fried carrot cake from fried carrot cake uh, was really good butter cake a butter cake yeah butter cake I think it's a it's a good bistro cafe find I think Lina's 
it's can give it a shot also. Good variety of, of meats lah, right? You can try like liver, you can try uh, the marinade. The marinade is actually really good. Before we go, we just want to go through from the comments. You should get a haircut lah, by the way. Looks un unkempt for a food blogger. I don't know, is that, is, that, is that a look for food bloggers? Is your video on 99 Thai Kitchen a paid advertisement? Go just try their food. It's one of the worst Thai food in Singapore. Firstly, to clarify, no, it is not sponsored. I, I found it pretty authentic lah, right? We just disagree lah if you don't like it, but I would not say it's the worst Thai food in Singapore lah. I've had worse Thai food lah, definitely. And lastly, one more from Mr. Wrong. Go tidy your hair. Come on, guys. I have the right to keep my long hair. That's the end of our Clementi food finding. Again, uh, like and subscribe, you know, leave your comments. Let's have a good, healthy discussion uh, on our video and stop commenting about hair, about my hair. Okay, it's here uh, to stay. It's not yeah, going to It's here to stay. It's not going to stay. I've, I've lived uh, too long with short hair. <laughs> anyway, thanks again for watching. Like and subscribe. Bye. See you guys next time. Yes, side note to Alice, please delete the part of Myanmar. Myanmar, 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 That is not the correct term for the citizens of Myanmar. They are Burmese. Learn something new.